ABC fan Paul and Amy here coming to you today from the Contemporary Resort where we just had lunch at Steakhouse 71. We know this one gets kind of some mixed reviews, so we wanted to check out lunch here. I think it's probably the only meal we've never had at Steakhouse. Yeah, so we've had dinner multiple times. We had brunch once, so this was our first lunch experience. Yeah, so hope you'll join us along for the ride and uh, we'll see what we think. If you like our content, please check out our sponsors over at the World of DVC, DVC Resale Market, where you can buy or sell a contract, Monero Financial, where you can finance that contract, and DVC Rental Store, where you can try before you buy or rent your own points out. As I mentioned in the intro, Steakhouse 71 is kind of a restaurant that's gotten a little bit of a bad reputation for itself, but I don't think that's a fault of Steakhouse 71. I think just the expectations and everything were very high from the get-go, but I think one thing to keep in mind is that it is extremely consistent, and that's essentially what I saw throughout our meal today. Now, first and foremost, the highlight of the meal was something that we walked into and saw two people enjoying, which was the fish bowl that you might have seen me drinking out of earlier. So that fish bowl is the 1971 Sunset, which is tequila, tropical pog juice, rosemary simple syrup, and a house-made grenadine. So essentially think of a tequila sunrise. We actually had them remove the rosemary from it because we were a little scared about it, but overall, it's a great drink, not too overpowering in terms of the alcohol taste. You get that refreshing tropical feel to it. Before I say anything else about the drink, I had to show it to you. We got this thing when we sat down. So one of the first things delivered to the table, had our entire meal and there's still this much left and there were three of us trying to tackle it. Now you can either think that it's amateur hour and we didn't try hard enough, but for the value, $27, this entire fishbowl serves up to two to four guests. I would argue that this is one of the best values in terms of an alcoholic drink on property. For an appetizer today, we got the Steakhouse 71 onion rings. And these were a pleasant surprise in terms of their lightness. So they were very light for an onion ring, not too heavy on the breading. And what we learned about these is that's largely in part due to the fact that they don't use an egg wash on the onion rings. And instead they use something I've never personally heard of, which is a mushroom wash. If you know what that means, put it in the comments below. I've still not really figured it out but it definitely gave these onion rings a lighter feeling. They were also served with a little bit of a spicy aioli that came along with them. Great little shareable appetizer. I think there were six onion rings total on the plate. So definitely something that you should go with if you're just looking for a nice appetizer to share with those people that you're dining with. So I originally thought that I was gonna go with the burger because that is what everyone raves about, but I feel like that's been reviewed enough. So I ended up going with the fennel and citrus crusted salmon. This is farro tossed with asparagus, arugula, 
charred fennel vinaigrette, and an asparagus puree. A very light dish. The, the salmon was cooked perfect. The farro, I really didn't enjoy that much. I just didn't feel like there was too much flavor coming from that part of it. But for what I wanted it to be, which was just a little bit of a lighter portion for lunch that I ended up pairing with French fries for some reason or another that weren't too light. Uh, but overall, I really enjoyed just the salmon. Thought it was a good piece of salmon and that's what I was really going for for this lunch. Would I probably recommend the dish on whole? Not necessarily. Our buddy Jeff is with us today and he ended up getting the gourmet grilled cheese which is toasted brioche, gruyere cheese, smoked gouda, shredded pork belly, and a caramelized onion jam with arugula for $17. Got to try this. It shouldn't maybe be dubbed as a grilled cheese, so to say. The pork belly is really what's highlighting the show in this, but overall, a great sandwich. For the 1971 sunset, I thought the same thing that Paul did. It was a great value, $27. The three of us were still trying to finish it. You could probably split it with four, and that brings the cost down immensely per person. Uh, so that was a very good value. I really enjoyed the onion rings. I always think that they're great here. They came off, you know, came out of the kitchen hot and fresh. I love the sauce that they serve with it. For my lunch entree, I was trying to go with something a little bit lighter. I do love the burger. I think it is one of the best burgers on property, but it's hot out today, so I wanted something lighter. I went with the Turkey Club. It's oven roasted turkey, applewood smoked bacon, lettuce, tomato on brioche. I always take the bacon off and give it to Paul because uh, this is not really my thing. It did come with a lemon aioli. I'm not a big fan of lemon on savory food, so I asked if they would sub the truffle aioli, which they did. The truffle aioli I thought was great on it it's a very strong truffle flavor so if you like truffles uh, that is a great option for you the sandwich itself the turkey was a little bit dry but overall with a ole i thought it was a very good sandwich it's a hearty portion it's a little bit messy in terms of sides you can get fries or a salad or pasta salad with it i got the pasta salad i am sucker for good pasta salad i did not love this pasta salad it was very olivey. So if you're not a fan of olives, it was kind of like mashed up olives throughout. It even so much that it kind of like dyed the noodles the color of the olives. So that's just something to note. If you're not a big olive fan, then this pasta salad might not be for you. The, for me, the highlight of our meal was our service. Our server's name was Janet. I thought that she was an excellent server. If you come in here to Steakout 71 and you get a chance to request her, I would. She was not only friendly, but she was very funny. She made us laugh. She made great recommendations. And overall, she just provided a great level of service. Amy, you mentioned this a couple times throughout dinner or lunch, whatever meal we just had, but I think it's about guarding and setting your expectations when you come to Steakhouse 71. It is consistently good. It is not gonna be the Yachtsman Steakhouse or Shula's or something like that. Yeah, so for me, you gotta remember Steakhouse 71 is not a signature restaurant. So when the dining plan comes back, my expectation is that it would be just one credit instead of two. So the prices here are lower than what, you know, Shula's or uh, Yachtsman yeah. or any other kind of steakhouse on property because most steakhouses are signature restaurants. Yeah, all told for three people today, it came in right around $98 after a DVC discount. Very reasonable for a lunch here for three people, especially because we got the 1971 sunset. I'm happy. Yeah, yeah. I agree. And, and we've actually, we've had lunch here. This is our first lunch here. We've had brunch, we've had dinner a couple of times. And all those times we've had very good experiences and good service too. Yeah, so I would definitely think if you have a last minute, looking for a last minute lunch reservation or something like that, that's what we did today. We just sort of checked the app, saw what was open, Steakhouse 71 popped up. So we jumped in here for lunch. Great spot to come in, cool off if it's a hot summer day outside and have a wonderful meal. That's gonna do it for us today. If you love this content that we have here on DVC Fan, please hit that thumbs up button. Also subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us along on DVCFan.com and the DVC Fan Facebook group for more information. Thanks so much and we'll see you next time.